Hi everybody, welcome to Old Guy's Garage. Hey everybody, welcome back. Good to see you. On this episode, we're going to be talking about my cold case radiator install swap. We swapped out the two core factory radiator. It had two three eighths inch row, two two three eighths wide rows for the cold case, which has two two rows, but they're inch and a quarter wide. So a lot more cooling cooling power with this radiator uh, to keep the good old uh, 400 with the 11 and a half to one compression cool. So this episode, we're going to be going to modifications, some upgrades, some tweaks. Um, some things that I painted, um, as well as as well as the parts that I used to make this swap. So throughout this process, I was detailing the front of the motor, putting a new water pump on, seals, thermostat, um, painting brackets, pulleys, that kind of stuff too. So you'll kind of see that happen in the background. Although I got another episode when I cover those cover those details. I've also got another video where I detail and, and paint the motor up. So watch that. Um, another thing I did with this radiator was use the Thermocure cooling, uh, coolant system cleaner. Worked really, really well. Took a lot of flushes. Um, would have loved to use the, the original radiator to do that, but the original radiator had a leak, leak up here, um, as well as as well as down down low somewhere. I can't quite remember. So had to use a new radiator to to flush all the gunk and old stuff out. Um, there was some calcium buildup in the top of the intake manifold. I presume that's all out, um, as I kept the thermocure in there for quite some time for quite a few running cycles. So stay tuned. Um, let's get to it. Um, we're going to start demoing the original parts out of here, and then we're going to put you know fit the new radiator in, make sure the brackets are in the right play, right places, do some painting, all that good stuff. And, uh, and get the car fired up. So stay tuned. Enjoy watching. There are chapters you guys can also click on to fast forward or go back to different steps and different processes um, that may help you out on your journey for swapping out your radiator. So that's about it for this intro, everybody. Um, thanks for watching. Hope this helps you. There is a chapter section, too, so you can skip ahead and save parts and jump the parts you want to see or you may need refresher po points on. So um, check those out. Um, the chapters definitely comes in handy. So, but anyhow, let's get to this video and, um, I'll see you, I'll see you at the end. Okay, everybody, let's go over the parts that I used in this process of, of changing out the old two core radiator to the, to the new cold case radiator. So here's a, here's a picture of the cold case. Um, this is the GM. The part number is GMA uh, 42A. Um, they also make a GMA 43A. Um, the GMA 42A um, is particularly for the 72. Um, Oldsmobiles, um, there is a width difference between between those two part numbers. So um, the one that I purchased is one inch wider than the GM A 43A model radiator. So this is a pretty darn good radiator. Came with lots of good reviews. Um, I am really happy with it since I've installed it. It has two one and a quarter inch rows. Um, the overall width is 34 and three quarters inches. Overall height is 18 and three quarter. The core width is 28.7. Um, in comparison to the GMA 43A, I believe that radiator has a 28 inch um, core width. So this core width's a little bit wider. The upper hose and lower hose, one and a half inch diameter. Um, <clears throat> it has um, trans cooler fittings, 5 16 inverted flares. So um, it's pressure tested. Um, 
pretty much says direct fifth fitment for GM for 86 to, or I'm sorry for 68 to 72 GM a body. This is the top plate that I bought. I bought it off of eBay. I believe it was from Inline Tube or um, Olds Parts. So uh, it also came with the rubber the rubber inserts um, for the top two brackets that hold the top two corners of the radiator. Very nice piece, quality piece. Um, it's finished really nicely. It's made for the wider four core and three core radiators. And these are the lower radiator support brackets with the rubber inserts. Um, they make um, these are, I believe, three and a half inches. They were wide enough for the for the uh, for the cold case radiator. They also make inserts for a three core radiator, which is our which are a little bit narrower. So make sure you get the right ones. These are the widest ones available um, for four core radiators and worked really well with the cold case. And let's not forget the upper and lower um, coolant hoses. Got those from inline tube, so um, they are working great. I did trim them a little bit for better fitment, um, but beyond that, they work great and they're worked and they're still in the car. I believe this was the fan clutch fan fan and fan clutch bolt kit. So this came in handy for putting the new fan and fan clutch on. This, of course, was for the fan shroud. So this worked really well. Came with the necessary inserts if you need them, as well as shims. Got this from Fuzik. And I also have bought some miscellaneous parts, too. You can see the cold case uh, radiator cap there that I bought. And I also bought some hydraulic line hose. Um, I had to put a new hose on for the upper coolant, coolant line for the transmission. But um, beyond that, um, those are pretty much the parts that I used to swap out the radiators here. So as you'll see through the video too, I was also working on the front end of the motor. So swapping out and putting new coolant parts on. So anyhow, um, that's up with the parts. Um, let's get started here. Um, we're going to do some disassembly of the lower air dam and valance and get that removed and then um, work our way to the top, um, draining the fluid, taking the fan shroud off, the fan, fan clutch and fan off, getting the radiator pulled, the hoses, all that stuff, as uh, we look forward to putting the new cold case radiator in. First thing I'm going to do is take this guy off. Um, Give us some access. This is a 3/8, 38 socket. So we're going to go ahead and remove this lower valance here, air dam, whatever you want to call it. Give us a little bit more access. All right, I'm going to start disassembling some stuff from the top here, and then we're going to disassemble some stuff down low. And we're eventually going to drain the radiator. So. Transmission line. I got some pictures where everything goes, and uh, I might just cut a hole in one of the radiator hoses too to help just drain drain everything out. So. Carefully remove these guys. There we go. Looks like it might be half an inch. Half inch it is. So these two here help hold the radiator shroud on. We're also going to take that off. I'll show you this too guys, um, when I put my fan on, I bought a new bolt kit from Kluzik, 
that came with these shims, so they help shim out your radiator shroud if you need to lower it. This one was a little, little tight on the bottom, so I tried to push it down. This radiator shroud was supposed to be an original GM one, um, but I was kind of, kind of shocked that, um, you know, just some of these markings just kind of don't look like as clean as I'd like it, but. I guess it is what it is. All right, let's get this guy here off. So we got a new one of these that's deeper to hold a bigger radiator. Okay, I'm gonna go down low, take the rest of the fan shroud out. Ooh, looks like my radiator's leaking here too. So this was a two core that came with the 350. Uh, we're updating it with the cold case radiator that has two one and a quarter inch rows so um, just want to keep this thing as cool as possible mainly going to be for me and my wife just going out um, cruising so so yeah we're going to get the uh, lower fan shroud off here in a second and looking at the clutch on the fan here I did get a good good replacement so might even repaint the fan blades too um, so We'll see how this goes. I'm definitely going the extra mile with this. So, but when I put it back together, it should look all new. So, all right, I'm going to go back under and get this fan shroud pushed back. shroud is loose. Let's see if I can get it out. I can't remember what I had to do to put it in. Um, nice working on these old cars. Everything's standard. There's nothing much that's metric. There's no metric on it. Now I can get to the uh, lever here to drain the radiator. Well, that's good. It didn't break off, snap off. All right, we're just going to let that drain. I think I'm going to continue to uh, remove some parts here. Got one more, one more nut here. And I'm going to take the fan clutch off. Hmm. Radiator stopped draining. There's no way that's as much. Okay. 
finished disconnecting some of these other hoses we got uh, transmission line hoses here we want to be very careful we don't strip anything out disconnect the overflow here oh shit keep that higher it's gonna still draining well I'm gonna start to uh, take apart this uh, radiator coolant or not radiator uh, the transmission coolant lines here oh man it's getting hot out here quick you know what I'm gonna leave this one on Tuck this back behind here Boy, watch your hands too when you're doing this. I don't want to hit anything and cut myself. Okay. Wow, that guy's really in there. Okay, so there is transmission fluid that wants to come out. I'm going to need another bucket. I'm just going to use a socket to get this guy off. Oh no, that requires a screwdriver. Well, that's all I got. <laughs> a little stubby. Rusty that guy is. Alright, so I'm gonna move this guy over here. Take this other hose off. Oh my god, I need a screwdriver. Where they all went, who the F knows? Oh man, that gets nasty. Just need a knife. Need some fluid left in it. see here. This guy might just come right on out. Okay. That's for the transmission. Oh. Well, got the uh, got the radiator out guys. See, we got some work to do down here on this frame for sure. I'd like to get this cleaned up. So we'll give it a shot. 
got my reference picks. Put the phone back on the charger because everything wants to die when you're making YouTube videos. Here all the batteries want to die. Gotta die, die, die. All right, day two here. Got the front end of the motor here put back together. I'm going to take the fan back off. I just got the bolts lightly screwed on. Take the fan and the clutch off. And then um, today we're going to mount the radiator. And um, you're going to have to put these guys down um, on the frame. I think I'm going to put two screws in each and maybe countersink the heads or something because originally it's a two core radiator in here and you can kind of see the difference in size so consequently well we gotta we're gonna clean this up to get that painted up before we drop the radiator in but I also bought some three inch core supports so I'm gonna see how see how these work I got the radiator out over there and I'm gonna see uh, I think these for the four coral work, but uh, I'm going to just dry fit them and see, uh, make sure that these brackets will go in okay for what we're going to do. So, as you can see, I think these, that fits pretty good. So I'm going to go with the, go with the bigger ones here, for sure. And, I think I'm going to get this all painted up and then put the new bracket in. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to pop the old one off, put the new one in, and then paint everything, but I know at least I'm going to get everything cleaned up first before I pop these off. So, we'll see how it goes. First get started here, I'm going to take that fan off. But yeah, it's looking good. Alrighty guys, we're going to work on cleaning this lower radiator support frame up camera there a little bit see if we can't get you some more light got cardboard on the floor and I'm going to use these trash bags on what we've done yesterday um, protect all the hard work that we've done get that down a little lower shape here. Well, I'm going to get some cleaning supplies and we're going to get at it. Um, I plan on repainting all of this through here. So, um, and then we're going to put in new radiator mounts. These just aren't wide enough. They say you can widen these, but um, we've got quite the distance to go, so I'm just going to put new ones in. I'm going to leave them in though as I'm cleaning though, and then um, might even put a coat of paint down and then remove these. These will give me an idea um, where to put the new ones. And it definitely looks like the back of this bumper is flush with this AC condenser here thing. So, yeah. all right, let's get to it. So I got some lacquer thinner here. Wire brush. I'm just gonna start scrubbing it. I was gonna go to pack this with some soap and water, but I'm gonna have to do this anyways to get any of the dirt and grime and um, grease, oil, all that stuff. I'm gonna leave that old disc bracket on. It's just gonna help me uh, place place the glue. I'm just getting the loose, loose dirt and stuff off of here before I really get into it. Okay, I put some cardboard down, and now I'm going to pull it out and get all this, get all the dirt. I just dropped down on there because I'm going to be laying on there too as we work. So.
I'm going to give the front of the car here a little bit more protection. Whatever it is, it might be splashing around. take off some paint but that's okay. I'm thinking we're gonna get all the we're gonna get all the grease and stuff off of here. So I'm just gonna get a coat of paint down that'll help me kind of place the new brackets. One last thing I'm going to do here before we apply a coat of paint. Whoops, I'm going to dry fit this and make sure that those, at least the placements left or right, is good. Oops. So, yeah, placement left or right is perfect. So, I just need to put the bigger ones in. Um, yeah, awesome, awesome. So, and we will go from there. Even the primer coat I think will be good to help me at least, you know, um, mark where the new bumpers need to go. Just thought of that. Alright, I think that just about does it uh, for inside here. We're going to scuff it before we top coat it. And I got TOR's 15 chassis black is what I'm going to use. I put gloss on the engine stuff for obvious reasons. just to be sure I am 27 and a quarter to 27 and 5 sixteenths gap here and I don't even know that's roughly right about three inches and that's roughly one and a quarter one and three sixteenths so I'm gonna write those down just to be sure We're going to start drilling these guys out here. You can see the spot welds on the bottom here. I'm not going to go with too big of a bit. I'm going to drill through them. Hopefully pop them because I'm going to run new screws through these holes. Lots of metal shavings. Okay, I'm going to go up top and try to knock them loose. Well, I guess I'll just drill it out a bigger one.
spot welds on that one. And this guy over here, I'm going to take the uh, hammer and chisel to him a few more times. Hopefully I can get this guy busted loose. Holy cow, this is the hardest part of the job so far, man. All right, everybody, I got them loose. Amen to that. Practically had to drill a 5 16 to a 3 16 hole through it. I'm just going to brush these metal particles down on the cardboard, and then I'm going to clean my cardboard off again. Check my bolt selection. See what kind of screws I have. So. All right, these new supports are going to go down in here. to hammer that down a little bit. Alrighty, well we're making progress. A silver sharpie here. I'm marking the bottom of those brackets. I'm having my helper wife helper hold it in wife. place. All right, that should do it. Just don't move the bracket. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark the bracket here. Engine and engine. Okay, and then this one is. I'm gonna have my arrows out. Okay. Cool beans. Yay. Okay, so these are marked for the drilling. Okay. Now that the helicopter's flying over. All right, so I've got my got some bolts here. I'm gonna have the lock washer and these lock nuts on the bottom, and these were some pretty decently sized flathead screws, and we got our brackets here mounted. Um, or we got our brackets here marked, I should say. Uh, I'm going to drill those out, and uh, we're going to get these mounted and then dry fit the radiator. All right, so got the brackets drilled out. Um, I'm going to place them in here, and uh, I've even kind of countersunk these a little bit. I don't want to drill through my hole. I'm trying to get these, whoops, as low as possible. I think I checked the Summit website last night and it looks like Cold Case actually has a kit now that you can buy to uh, screw through this into your uh, plane there. Should have roughly 27 and a quarter between these. I don't have these screwed in, so let's see how we did. Yep, we got roughly 27 3 16 so that's good. I think my biggest biggest question is going to be if I have these placed right front to back. So um, let's get these on. I need a Phillips, and uh, I'm going to get my small sockets out and match it up with the nut here. A stubby Phillips, so I don't have to reach as far. So let's get this first bracket on. I'm going to get them pretty snug. Um, go. Okay, I need you to take one of those Phillips screwdrivers on top there mm -hmm. and push it in the bolt closest to the engine. Okay, I'm going to put the washer and lock nut on it. Oops. Hopefully I got the right socket this time. It's Your nuts down there on the ground. Okay, good. Where'd it go now? 
All right, here we go. You know which one I'm working on. Yep. I hope I don't have to drill out any holes. The radiator sitting in there would sit in there nice, you know. That's what I'm hoping for. All right, I'm going to paint the bottom of this. And use my trash bag here as a mask. I'm going to have to go this way because I can only do this right handed. So, all right, we'll have to paint it black here shortly when the primer dries. All right, so got these in. Let's see if we're 27 and a quarter. Yeah, should be about three inches. We're a little bit to the right on that one. This guy here, we're right at one inch. I think we're a little, I think, yeah. All right, I'm gonna drop the radiator in here and just dry fit it. right looks good the one on the left's definitely gonna have to come over um, yeah this width looks good too Let's see if I can't tap that one on the left to come over a little bit because I am like wow I'm right on this brace and I am about three quarters of an inch off of this one so yeah well, one way I'm going to know is it looks good on the brackets, but man, I feel like I need to go over a half a quarter inch or so. Yeah. Oh, that fits really nice. There we go. Man, that fits good. I got hole alignment and everything. So I think those bottom brackets are good. Um, it looks like, man, that left, that bottom left one still could come over a little bit, darn it. Um, this looks good through here, so I got a couple of holes here for the fan shroud. This one was for the three core setting. This is for the four core. This is similar to the four core. Hey everybody, so we got the cold case radiator in fitting properly. I really like how this top cover here is centered on these screws, which tells me a lot that we got these in a good spot. These are in a great spot. And then even down low, um, we're, we're, we're right where we need to be. So um, that means um, we're going to take this off, take the radiator out, and uh, we're going to finish painting that bottom, bottom frame part down there, put some black on it, and get our rubber in those lower brackets we just installed, and then uh, permanently put the radiator in. Alright, I'm going to get some primer on all this.
There we go. my chassis black PR 50 and 15. So. Tack coat here. Pushing that up a little bit. There we go. Okay. I'll let that dry, and I'm going to work on the bottom side. I want to get a fresh coat of paint on the bottom. Enough, it'll get narrower the more you pull on it, then it'll pop. There we go. All right, those are in. beans all right ready to drop the radiator in cool beans let's do it to it so one thing I say from the old radiator is the top and bottom um, I guess this is just like a just like a rubber uh, rubber seal, it just you know just minimizes that metal on metal um, contact for vibration. And um, we're going to attach these to the top and bottom here of the radiator with some double sided tape. So um, let's get to it. didn't use much I had I reinstalled this on the uh, on the 72 and I originally put the shr new shroud on it Drop this guy in. <clears throat> the moment we've all been waiting for. Ugh. All right. 
man, that's that's nice in that one, and that's nice in that one. Cool, we got that bumper on the bottom that's not making that metal on metal. Let's get the, uh, the new top plate here. Put that on. Perfect. Man, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Man, looking good. Cool. I should have bought some new bolts just for this. I'll have to take these out and paint them. Although I do have this kit from Fuzik that might have. You know, Voila, look at that. Man, that's in there really well. Got our cushion thing up top too. Man, that is fitting well. Holy cow, look at that. Right, I'm going to put these old bolts back in here. I kind of know where to go to. All right. Well, we know this guy goes here. So... I'd have to cut them down a little bit. And I think I did pretty damn good. Um, yeah, I think I did pretty damn good. to the overflow. Cool beans. Oh yeah. Let's look at those cores. Those rows, I mean. It's a real deal. See this one. Let's see. This one here is supposed to go down low. And then this one's supposed to go up high. I got, I've got, got some I can reach. If not, I'll just have to cut a new hose. The old one was went right here. It was a little lower. Transmission cooler, I will. Just gonna hand thread it in, take it nice and easy. Yep, it's not gonna make it. Alright, well I'm gonna have to cut a new one. And I might just have to cut this pipe down here too. Wow. That's a transmission cooler line. Um I don't think I'm gonna get them in there. So, 
I'm gonna have to cut them. I've got a uh, cutter for that. And then um, got a lower hose to put on here. Got the old hoses out here with the new ones, so we're gonna put these springs back inside to help keep the radiator hose from compressing. So this one was on the top end. You can see how rusty it was, so we're gonna have to clean him off before we put him on. But this bottom one's good to go. So I'm putting this guy in. An equal amount from both sides. And these are uh, hoses I got from. Uh, so that's going to go down there. And that one's going to go right there. Looks like I need to cut cut it down a little bit, boy. Push them on a little more. Yeah, that bottom one looks good. Okay, got that on. Do the top one next. I got a little bit more work to do on it. I've got to uh, cut down a transmission cooler line down there, and then um, what else? Buy some transmission cooler line, some rubber hydraulic line. Um, that one's just a little too short. I thought I cut it long, and I didn't. So, but other than that, this cold case is in there, and it's sitting pretty. So. I'm going to uh, loosen up the power steering pump so I can get the other belt on, at least placed, and then i um, going to get the fan shroud on here. So. I had to do since this is a deeper radiator than what I had I had to uh, cut down my transmission line and redouble flare it um, so it would fit I guess I could have tried bending it more but I didn't really want to kink the line so I cut it and reflared it All right so we got the fan shroud on and the radiator in and started repainting the motor too um, to the copper color that was original to the old 400s got the new water pump on and I guess I went a little crazy painting the pulley and or the pulleys I should say for the water pump the crank pulley and the, the pulley fan pulley got the uh, new fan clutch on there painted the old fan straightened some of the blades a few of them had some minor nicks but, but yeah, so we're walking around the car here. Got the new top plate on as well for the bigger radiator. And uh, just got to go around checking all the bolts. Everything I touched one last time before I started up. And, and down here I had to cut this transmission line about a half inch short and then um, flare it. I reflared it, so... Everything else here, this guy here was a little higher than the prior transmit than the prior um, radiator, but 
everything else and I think on the prior radiator this may have been a little coming out a little higher as well but but no biggie so I think I pretty much nailed it as far as placement goes this looks really good um, from left to right so I really couldn't ask for much better um, so I'm just gonna go around check everything I did and uh, start adding some fluid to it don't forget don't add just tap water I got some uh, distilled water here from uh, Wally World that was a little bit over a buck and um, there was some calcium that I detected in the intake manifold when I changed the um, the temperature sender sensor sender so I'm gonna put this thermocure in there this is supposed to be really good at eating the calcium and rust up so you just mix this with distilled water there's still some antifreeze and everything in the block but um, so where you're gonna use that put some distilled water in this thing fill her up and uh, and get it going So we're putting some good old distilled water in the radiator. Looking good. We got it started here. Sounded good. I did have to tighten my gooseneck thing here. I didn't have it. Um, I didn't have the bolts tightened down enough, man. I'm always afraid I'm going to break a bolt off. But anyhow. Got some rattling going on. I think it might be the power steering, so it's a little loose on the loose side. I gotta work on getting it tight. So, and gotta get some mufflers. So, I got the thermo cure in it, and I'm trying to uh, let that work through the system here. Um, it looks like my overflow tank's working too. I see some coolant going in it or out of it, one of the two. It looks like it just grabbed a little bit from out of it. So, um, it's a little bit below the ad where I had it a little bit fuller than that last time. So, so I got this cool thermostat thing here. Yeah, on the headers I'm about 450 to 500. By the temperature sensor I'm right around 180, 190. Point it down here to the header. About 500. Back to the back side of the intake manifold. Not bad. It just looks like the rear of the motor is just running a little warmer. That ain't too bad. I'm 185. So, anyhow, yeah, I got to get some more gas in this thing, but all in all, I think it's. I think that's a heat riser right there. So, cool beans. All right, everybody. Still got the uh, 72 running here. So, hope you enjoyed this episode. Got the motor here all painted up, detailed up. Everything's been working really, really good. So, um, just running it here. No noises. You know, sounding like it should. So, running really, really well. Overflow tanks working like it should. So, we flushed out the radiator, or flushed out the cooling system, I should say. The radiator was brand new, so it's been running really, really well. Just really like that hum, man. Thanks for tuning in. Hope that helps you out in your ride. So uh, we got more coming up with 72 and 86. And I know my wife's always doing things with her vehicle too. So anyhow, thanks for tuning in. And just remember, whether it's a muscle car or a race car, 
classic car, your dream car, let's keep them running. And we'll see you next time.